Hello everyone, it's Benjamin Wara and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make a smooth up and down movement of any object in Unity. Let's begin. In this tutorial, we're going to be working with this scene, which is a coin that's static, and we're going to give it a very smooth up and down movement during playtime. To achieve this effect, we're going to be using the sine wave, and more specifically, the behavior of its y-axis. A sine wave is a geometric waveform that oscillates periodically and is defined by the function y is equal to sine of x. In other words, it's an S-shaped smooth wave that oscillates above and below zero. In this online calculator, linked down in the description below, we can visualize its behavior. It moves through the x-axis and in its simplest form oscillates in the y-axis between values from 1 to minus 1. Using the y-axis in our program will be useful as it provides a smooth up and down movement thanks to the S-shape of the wave. Okay, so let's get started. So this scene has a background and a coin that we're going to animate. If we go ahead and hit play, we will see that this coin just has a little animation. Apart from that, it has nothing. The first thing that we want to do is to go ahead and create a script and link it to the coin to control the coin's movement. In this script, what we're going to be doing is basically updating the position constantly of the coin according to the movement in the y-axis of the sine wave. To do this, we're going to set a new transform.position for our object in a new vector3. This vector3 would contain values of 0 in its x and z-axis because we don't want to change that value. In the case of the y-axis, we wanted to follow the sine wave behavior. To do this, we can basically put mathf.sine and we have to put between the parentheses the x value which in our case is going to be time because we want the y value to change according to how much time has passed in the scene. Now when we hit play you can see that the coin will have a very beautiful very smooth up and down movement. Now probably this movement wouldn't be satisfying for your specific game so now I'm going to show you two variables that will help you modify this wave so it suits your game behavior. Now the first modification that we're going to give to our program is a variable called amp, which stands for amplitude. Now what we can do is basically multiply math times a constant and this will make the wave go higher in altitude or lower depending if you put a value lower or higher than 1. For example, now if I put a value of 1, you will see the normal wave behavior that we saw last time. But if I change the value to 0.3, you'll see a wave that's much smaller. Now you'll also notice that the period of the wave will decrease, making it effectively slower. So the way that we're going to counteract this is by incrementing the frequency. For this we're going to be creating a new public float variable that's going to act as a constant. I called it frequency and I'm going to multiply it times the x-axis of the sine wave. So inside math.sine you'll see time.time, .time, I'm going to multiply it times a constant which I'm calling frequency and then in the inspector I can change the frequency to change the period. So if we increment the frequency variable that we added we can see that the overall speed of the movement starts to increase dramatically. Now to finish off this tutorial we need to solve a problem. If we move the coin from the center position, the origin point of the scene, we will see that the coin will autocorrect its position to be zero. Now, the reason why this happens is because we are constantly setting the x position to be zero in our transform the position. Now, the way that we can solve it is by creating a private vector3 variable called init position. And in the start function, we will set init position to be equal to transform the position. And then in the new vector of the transform the position, we will set the x axis to be equal to init position dot x. Afterwards, to also account for the y axis, we need to go ahead and add an offset. In our case, we just add initial position dot y. And that's all there is to it. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more videos like these. Also, if you have any suggestions for new videos, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll read them and I'll consider them. Anyways guys, have a nice one.